Hey, what's going on ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of the Crate Ute Experience. Now in this episode, you might think I'm a little crazy because I'm on the side of the road, but the fact is I want to bring experiences to you that you enjoy. And whether that is an intro, that could be actual episode itself, or just a podcast in general, we want to really show up for you and your vision. So, with that being said, today we are having Nick Bobodina fly into town in Denver, Colorado. He's a very, very successful entrepreneur who works with so many different athletes who compete and are influencers online, on Instagram, and all across social media. So not only are we gonna discover how he did it, but we're really gonna uncover his vision and how he's being so successful and transforming so many lives. Oh, on the side of the, uh, on the side of the road. You're good, dude. I'm not even a baggage claim yet. I'm like just getting a baggage claim in my bag, so I'll probably be like another 10 minutes. I don't know where you are. Yeah, uh, give me, I'll be there in like, in like 20. That's okay. fine. Cool? Yeah, uh, just tell me you All right, see you in a few. Woo! Good morning. Good morning. What's up, baby? So you do obviously you do online coaching and you work with a lot of different clients, right? You have high end and you have high end like people, like people that really, really are killing it in the industry, right? Absolutely. So, so yesterday you made a post and you, actually an Instagram story. Yeah. Story. And how many inquiries did you get? Uh, over the course of the day before that and last night we got a little over three hundred inquiries for coaching. So why? Why is it that you can get over 300? You don't have a massive following at all. No, I like just broke 20K, which right. is like literally nothing, nothing compared to influencers. Yeah. So why can you be so successful with it and other people can't or can't, they can, but why aren't they? I think a big part of that comes from like, I mean, you and I talked about this a little bit earlier, it's like how people show up right. to what they fucking do. Right. Like I'm such an advocate of no matter what I do, it's always gonna be my best. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna half-ass something. I'm not gonna get like, oh, here's your plan. Go ahead and do it. You know, I've always been the coach. Like, I don't give a fuck if you have 200 followers, you have 200,000 followers, you have two million followers. If you're not executing, I'm gonna be like, hey, you're fucking slacking. You need to pick yes. it up because I know you're not working as hard as you can. And a lot of people can't handle that approach, and that's fine. But I'm a very blunt, no bullshit coach, and my goal is always to, and I tell people, like, I wanna dig deep inside of you and find that inner beast you don't even know that's there and bring that out. Everybody has it, but most people aren't pushed hard enough to transform into that beast until they work with me. That's why my clients thrive so much, and that's what people see. Ooh, no <laughs> gold! It's fucking gold! Dude, that's gold. This is what, bro, this is, Go, go. <laughs> Hold me close till I get up. Time is barely on our side. I don't want to waste what's left. The storms we chase are leading us. And love is all we love. So, Nick, um, yes, sir. When, you, when you really train people online or coach people online, you know, People vary, right? People vary from Absolutely. from overweight to even just competitors. So, when you're talking about like eating out, right, and yeah. you need to eat something before you work out or whatever, like how do you structure these things, like person to person? I know it's all different, but can they go to Chipotle? Can they go eat at different places like we are right now? Absolutely. But the bigger thing I tell people here is that we need to be like starting off. You're learning, right? I'm learning their body, they're usually learning their body too and what works and what digests well, what doesn't. So I always tell them, you know, let's experiment. You know, give yourself a month or two at first to experiment. Because for me personally, I know Chipotle digests very well with my body. It's very easy on me. Uh, you know, I can eat it, I can work out, I get a good pump, there's a lot of sodium in it. Uh, it doesn't bloat me. I know that because I've experimented with right, it. Right, right. And I tell people, you know, if they go out and they're like, yeah, I had Chipotle, but I was super bloated afterwards. I'm like, all right, well, hey, that's probably a good sign that we probably shouldn't be eating Chipotle that much. You know, why don't we try this instead? Yeah. So it's a lot of it's a lot of trial and error at first and kind of being able to say, hey, this might not work for me, but in order for me to really know that, I need to try it, right? Because there's, there's, there's always going to be things that, again, vary from person to person right. because some people literally, they eat cheese and they blow up for the entire day. I eat cheese, I'm fine. So it all varies and you can eat 
you can go out and eat and you don't have to be so strict to the point where like, hey, I can't have Chipotle even, right? No, I mean, I'm nine weeks out from a bodybuilding competition and I'm eating Chipotle. Right. Even. I mean, it all comes down to context and learning your guys' bodies. And cool. again, getting a coach to watch over that and be able to say, hey, this is probably a no-go or this is probably a green light is very beneficial. Wait, so there you have it guys. That is your Create You experience. Now we're gonna jump onto the podcast, dig a little bit deeper into Nick's vision, what he does, where it came from, and really inspire you to not only start your own coaching business, but to take some strategies into your own life and really flourish and blossom the vision that you have set forth. Let's do it, baby. Hey, my name is Brennan Myers, and welcome to the Create You Experience, where we ignite your breakthrough, create your experience, and bring your vision to life. Uh, I can't sit around and wait till it goes right, cause I've been hopping over obstacles my whole life. I got a vision and I know it's about to take flight. I'm dedicated to growth, I keep my mind right. I fell down, got up, I'm unbreakable. Anything in my way, I'ma break through. Lights, camera, action, take two. Can't worry about what they do. You gotta create you. Welcome back to another episode of the Create You Experience. Today, we have an incredible guest, a good friend of mine named Nick Comodina. I said that right. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Super excited about that. This time. Remember, this is an unfiltered podcast. We're here on YouTube, but we're also across all audio platforms. So if you have not checked us out yet, get there get cranking and really tune in because we have a lot of juicy shit that we talk about here. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest, <laughs> super honest. But Nick is an astounding entrepreneur. He's from Thank San you. Diego. San Diego. Did you San like San Diego? <laughs> <laughs> South of San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> but Nick owns NK Athletics. He works with people everywhere from athletes and influencers all the way down to everyday people who, who really want to transform from the inside out. And that's mm -hmm. most important. He's not just a physique coach uh, and, and nothing against that, but he's a lot more than that. He really brings the science behind all of his training and his coaching um, and taps into the mentality of each of his, his clients and really works with them. And it's not even a uh, really clients, they're more so partnerships because they're building something together. Yeah, definitely. And that's the incredible part. And then he also is the owner of Impact, and it's just that. They impact the world. They impact the industry and through apparel and other advent adventures that, that they're going through now and will be evolving through. Um, but Nick is an incredible, incredible entrepreneur and a great person. He has been showing up on social media every single day with this energy and this love and passion for everyone around them especially his followers. And that's why I asked him to come on here, come here to Denver, Colorado, and really exceed expectations with anyone watching of what they thought you may be. So Nick, no pressure. fucking welcome, bro. <laughs> Thanks, brother. I'm happy to be here, man. First time in uh, Colorado. <laughs> yeah, yeah, A lot was... hotter than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> we, we, we were having this little trolling session really quick before we jump into anything. And, uh, <laughs> and we were saying... Uh, <laughs> Obviously, he knows a lot about nutrition and, and caloric uh, expenditures, expenditures and, and, and all like that. that yeah. And so I basically told him, I said, hey, listen, man, you're a mile high now. You, don't so have, you only have to do 10 <laughs> minutes of cardio and you're going to burn as much as 30 minutes. <laughs> and it was, just, it was just hilarious. We got a freaking speck over there on the camera just laughing back there. But Nick, you know, we talk about your business now and it's super successful, hmm. right? You work with people and... And just the other day, as we, as we talked through the Create You Experience here on YouTube, we went through an entire experience. By the way, if you're listening on an audio, we do have an entire experience before the podcast specifically um, that we dive into kind of the background um, and some of the, the, the knowledge base training that, that Nick really is, has formed his business upon. And uh, it's really awesome content. You definitely want to check that out. But you know, you're so successful now. 
And just the other day, you had 300 plus emails for people wanting to work with you. Mm -hmm. And you don't have a large following. Not at all. So I think fuck, Nick. I just like, broke 20K, just so we're clear. Okay, you're big time. Big you're time. Bi that's big Dude, time. <laughs> I, almost, I, don't have a, I don't have a white check mark yet. A white check mark. It's, it's white blue. now, isn't it's it? It's blue. So show some respect. <laughs> I thought it was white on my live. No. Yeah, that's your live, though. Oh. Yeah. Well, I don't have, a, I don't have any check marks. But my only request that you show respect to us blue check mark yeah. people. No, we that's have, fair. We usually have a team meeting every us week. Us peasants don't really know about it. So <laughs> I, don't, I don't know the, so, the society so of check marks. That's, that's really what the world is turning into, right? It's like, like <laughs> hey, dude, I have a blue check mark, so uh, we can't go to Whole Foods together. I'm not paying for this. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so what makes you so, I don't want to use the word special because I don't think anyone's special. Me neither. What makes you so unique? I just think that when you, when you take somebody, A, I don't think a following means jack shit. I don't care. Amen. I don't care if you have 50 followers, 500,000 followers or 5 million followers. If you're a shit person, then you're a shit fucking person. I don't treat anybody different when I meet them and I find out that they have 5 million followers. I'm like, oh shit. You know, like, what do you need yeah. from me? I'm like, cool. I don't, that, that doesn't mean anything to me. You're, you're the same person as I am. And that relates to what, why you're so successful. And I, I think so, because a lot of people, I, I think almost feel entitled to like, you all follow me. Why wouldn't you coach with me? And they can pump out half-ass content, half-ass efforts, yeah. and they only get half-ass results and wonder why. They usually blame somebody else. They can't dive in and say, I'm not putting my best forward. And my biggest concept ever is everything I do is always my fucking best. I don't Amen. ever put out anything that's half-ass. I don't, I don't have a small, or I don't have a large following. So everything I do needs to make that impact. So it's the 100% mentality. It's not, it's not, hey, I'm gonna fuck life and or actually, I'm gonna allow life to fuck me. I don't let and anything do fuck 80%, me. And do eighty percent. True, true. <laughs> okay, true. Uh, but so like you're not you're not that eighty percent guy. You're not gonna go into a relationship at 80, 90 percent. No. And and everything's relationships, right? So your successful business is based off of relationships, and how you perform is all based off of relationship as well. It's like the value you provide a hundred percent value mm -hmm. all day on social, and that's why I even tell people, you, you need. One person, you need one person to believe in you to, get to, to have them as a client or have them to pay you and to build your successful business or whatever you want in your life. Well, like I a hundred percent agree. And a lot of people, cause this will dive back into the following thing is I, you know, talk to a bunch of coaches that go, Hey man, like I'm starting off. I can't get any clients. You know, I only have 500 followers. And I go only 500 followers. You have 500 fucking people in your audience. Yeah. Sign 10% of them. That's 50 fucking clients. That's a full-time coaching business. That could be $15,000 at $300 a month. Absolutely. But nobody thinks like that. They think, well, I don't have a following, so I can't do anything. Well, what is your fucking, what does your material look like? How do you, what do you look like? You know what I mean? It, not you, but like, like, so literally. So here's the thing is every single one of my clients, I'm, I'm very upfront that I'm a no bullshit type of coach. Yeah. I don't give up. I, like there is so many excuses I've heard. I don't deal with them. I don't tolerate them. I tell everybody I work with that they, every single person, everybody listening here, you guys all have this internal fucking beast in you to be successful in careers, school, relationships, the gym, your physique, your diet. And the only thing stopping you is that you have no idea that it exists, <laughs> but I know it fucking exists. So if you work with me, I pull back everything that makes you uncomfortable. And I know I can tell after working with somebody for two weeks, I can tell you're not comfortable doing this. So what do I do? I make them fucking do that. Yeah. And they grow and they become better. Great and then you. all of a sudden we fucking rip them open and pull out this beast. And they're like, I don't even know who the fuck I am anymore. And I'm like, yeah. good. Yeah. 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 Dude, that fucking gold. If, you, if you're watching this, I'm pointing at the camera right now or audio. Listen, I'm pointing at the camera because if you don't create yourself, you'll never be able to create anything else in your life. Exactly. You're never going to be able to create that business. You won't create that, that relationship. You won't be able to create like that, that house that you want with those kids or anything really. And really what, what you're getting at is all of the shit that we've added on to our life over time and telling ourselves and doubting ourselves that because of what society says, we grow up hearing no. That's, that's our society. No, you can't do that. Yeah. No, you can't drop out of 
college and start your own business. Right. No, you can't eat carbs or you're going to get fat. No, you can't do I that. I do like carbs. I lo fucking love carbs. Do you like pizza? I love pizza. Do you, you like, do you like hamburgers? I love hamburgers. That's I like cheeseburgers better. Do you really? Yeah. Why? Because it's cheese. Wow. That, you, that's science right there. No, absolutely. Is that, is that a part of the N NK Athletics principle? Like the yeah. Strat yeah, cheese on burgers. Like cheese on burgers. Always. So let's shift really quick because I love. I, this is what I love to do. I love to make these things all over the place. Yeah. So that when people great. are listening, they're like, whoa, bang, fuck, oh, shit, oh, wow, stop sign. But whoa. you know what else is a good thing is then you know who's bullshitting and who's not because they can't keep up. Exactly. I cannot keep up with whatever he just said. And that's great. <laughs> that's fucking great, Nick. That was great. NK Athletics. Uh, so, <laughs> but no, seriously, um, when, when, when you apply these principles to everyone, right? We were just mm. training. And, uh, you know, you did, you actually explained yourself so well. I have my exercise physiology degree. I wasn't going to argue. I wasn't going to like be pissed off or anything. I mentioned something about like your training method and I have no complaints. Mm -hmm. I literally have zero complaints because you explained yourself in a way that I understood mm -hmm. like, Hey, Brendan, you know, yes, if you want to go for power or, or, or be an explosive, you're going to use these two fingers a little bit more or use that thumb. Yes, but we're working towards building that specific muscle. So those yeah. lats or the low traps or the rhomboids or all those, the rotator cuff muscles. So like, where did you learn all that shit, man? Dude, to, com to be completely honest, and this is something that everybody, when I tell them, they're kind of like, wait, what? Was it like, because like, like books are us? Like, you yeah. <laughs> Yeah, basically. No, man. I uh, <laughs> physiology for I, dummies. <laughs> I went to community college okay. for a year and a half. I, you know, I was majoring in kinesiology. Um, I dropped out because college just isn't for me. And I started personal training at a gym. Was there for two years. Me and the guy fell out. I opened up my own gym. I had Shit. that for three and a half years. So I was doing it, like hands-on personal training. 5 a.m. till 9 p.m. at night for five years and doing my own research on top of that. And anything I read, any studies I saw, any videos I watched, I was able to take that and immediately put it on people and see how it works on every single person and then be like, why don't you try doing this? And being able to like physically see somebody go, oh shit, I feel that. Yeah. You know, and just drilling that in my brain for six fucking years. Experience is the number one teacher in this entire world. Amen. So yeah, that's how I damn learned all that. Well, that, it, 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 it's very interesting because you know I I went through my I, I did something a little bit different, right? I went for my exercise physiology degree. There's there's no problem about going to school and all of that. That's a whole different absolutely not. That's a whole different uh, that's topic a whole within other itself. Worms. Um, I think you can go to school. I think it's great. I also think it's bullshit in a lot of fucking ways. I'm the, I, think I, it, I have I think you and I have the same standpoint. Yeah, we're also have the same energy. Mm -hmm. And we're also great boxers. Hey, you want to spar after this? Absolutely. Sweet, man. Go to YouTube. Check it out now. <laughs> no, not clickbait. <laughs> yeah, not clickbait. <laughs> but I just punched him in the face. No, but, um, you know, with principles and, and everything that you've learned, and, and th that's very interesting because you talk about you had your own gym. Mm -hmm. so, so someone that's listening to this and they're like, oh, fuck, like I want to build a gym or – I want to be a successful coach. I want to make 10K, 20K, 30K, 40K, 50K. I mean, we throw these Ks around like it's like it's whatever. <laughs> By the way, if anyone's listening, not everyone makes as much as they say they do. I'll just not put that out there, close. okay? Um, they bullshit a lot. But from that standpoint, if someone's listening to this and they're they're hearing all this stuff, it, what what mistakes and stuff did you did you have to bust? Did did you like consume and really embrace to? to get past so you could really build the gym and then you could really go into personal training in a different way and then coach and really be successful with all this stuff. Like, what did you have to go through? So I think number one was that I was such a, I'm an, I'm an impatient person when I, when I want something, or I should say was, cause I've learned, um, I was very impatient. So the first opening I got, I was like, I need to take that. Right. Even if it wasn't ideal. Right. Um, I, I, like uh, signing up with the the dude who was my boss it was a terrible, terrible environment, but I was stuck in it yeah. because I was too impatient. I went right straight through it. Um, and then when I opened my gym, I had a lot of clientele at first. Um, and I started getting just too overwhelmed. I got too tired. I stopped giving a shit about my effort and showing up for my clients because I was like, I, I felt entitled because I opened a gym. Like it was like, I'm... 21 years old and I own my own gym and like you guys can come here and train like 
you can you can be fine if I'm like not as present in your session for a little bit because mm. I'm tired. And people started dropping off. And I didn't understand. Yeah. You know? And until finally, like I had that kick in the ass of like, man, one of my clients was like, dude, like you're just like, you're not, it's like I don't even train with you anymore. Right. They're like, you just stand there. And they're like, when you were at the other gym, like you were all on my shit. Like you wouldn't let me slack. And like, you know, you told me to do 15 reps. I did six and you didn't even notice. <laughs> You know what I mean? And that was like that, that fucking smack to my face. It was like, dude, wake the fuck up. You have to keep showing up for people. Like we, we get so comfortable and like, this even goes further than business. This is like relationships, yeah. friendships. Yep. And like, we get yep. so comfortable and we start feeling so entitled that like we stop showing up. And then when people stop showing up for us, we go, what the fuck? Right. Yeah. And isn't that, isn't, that's, that's, that's a catch 22. Hold, hold on. I don't, I don't want to go too fast because that, like what you just said is that when people say something to us, like we could say something to someone else and be like, huh? Yeah. Fucking cool. Well, like suck it up. Once we hear it back, it's, hear it back it. it's like, whoa. So what if we took the stance with like building our own businesses and, and building our relationships in the same way? We're like, Hey, I don't want to be treated this the way that I like, I don't want to be treated wrong. So why would I ever like exactly. reciprocate that? You have to give what you want. You know, you can't, you can't, you can't expect to get something you're not giving. Right. It's like respect, like respect is given, not earned. Right. And right. so, and so for you, you weren't giving that same respect. Not at all. And people were going, why the fuck would I pay you money? But I couldn't grasp that concept. So I lost a ton of clients right. and then I was struggling. I was eating top ramen. I was like, top, but, but hold on, hold on. Uh, top ramen is good, man. Oh, it's fantastic. Okay. Keep going. I just want to note that. <laughs> Um, but like, you know, I was like, fuck, like, how am I going to keep this gym open? How am I going to keep this gym open? And I was like, I got to get back on my bullshit. And I just had this surge of motivation and I started promoting myself. And I got more clients in. Once I got my clientele back up, the same shit happened. Really? And I got in this toxic cycle. Um, and finally I broke it because I started, I, I started telling myself and I had to kind of figure out that motivation is so temporary Motivation is not a, yep. a, a constant and nobody understands motivation that. and dis discipline are two different things. Exactly. Do not I, use them in the same, like in the same instance. I like, always use this concept for this. And that's people who work jobs, right. Or, or going to school. When you wake up in the morning to your alarm at 4 AM, you are not fucking motivated to stop that and get out of your warm bed and get ready for work. But you are disciplined to do so because yes. you know, you have to go to work if you want to get paid. You have to show up if you want to get the reward. And that principle, that discipline needs to be in every single fucking thing we do in our life. But the problem is, Nick, is that the way society is set up now, you don't have to show up as much anymore to, be, to, to actually have some money, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's, not about, it's not about vision. I'm not talking about vision. I'm talking about just for money, mm -hmm. right? You just don't need to show up as much. You see it all the time now. It's like... It's like as just as a coach, for instance. Yeah. Someone could literally have a hundred clients mm -hmm. and kind of put work in. They're still getting paid. People don't want to stay on, but yet they keep on coming in because someone has a following or whatever it is, mm -hmm. and they're not really truly providing so much value, and they don't have discipline in that value. But yet they're still getting paid. Doesn't mean that their vision's coming to life, right? But they're still getting paid. And actually, I think that's a problem in society all the time. Is that we, we consume this idea that, hey, we don't have to give it our all all the time. Yeah. Because. Shoot for the middle. Because I'm getting some of this. Or I'm getting some of that. Mm -hmm. Or I'm getting a little bit leaner. Or, I, or, or this girl does kind of like me. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, well, our relationship is okay. So I don't have to try as hard. So I don't have to try as hard. Like, it's okay. So, like, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck can we do to create people? To, that anyone's listening to. For anyone in this world to take the stance of all or nothing. You either go all in and you don't cheat yourself or you go all out and you don't cheat yourself. But here's the thing, bro. Not everybody's like that. Why? Everybody has it. Everybody has that beast inside of them, right? Not everybody in their life is going to find it and bring it out. But you know what? We need that because we need janitors. We need desk workers. We need customer support at AT&T. We need but, them. but 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 people go all in on on those things as well, right? Like 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 someone. Let's just say someone's circumstance. They come from let's say Mexico and they come into the United States and they like 
real shit, they do the jobs, a lot of the jobs, the hard fucking working jobs that a lot of Americans don't want to. Oh, absolutely. You know, so like, I, I can't even tell you how many, like, especially in San Diego, because we're right there. Yeah, yeah. I can't tell you how many like Mexican entrepreneurs there are that start their own landscaping businesses and have, you know, a crew of 15 guys who work under them and knock out 20 to 30 houses a day at a hundred houses or a hundred dollars a house. You know what I mean? Right. Like there are always going to be those people who know, Hey, I like, I want to be, I want to create the best life for myself possible. I can't stop working until I do it. And then there's those people that go, you know what? I'm getting a solid paycheck. I have enough money to go get drunk once a week. I'm cool. That's not me. That's not my clients. That's not anybody I work with because I don't allow them to do that. So, so, so first thing that this is what he's saying is that number one, show up. Absolutely. You have if to. You, if you want something in return, show up. Yes. Number two, don't fall into the trap of what society brings to the table and like, oh, hey, it's okay. Like, it's not okay. It just, just, it's just not. as simple, simple as that. Like, it's not fucking okay. It's not okay. Just don't, don't do it. Um, and number three, but, but, and, and before I say anything else, I do want to tap back into, and this is my number three. You said that not everyone will be able to in their lifetime to yeah. be able to go all in or like be a hundred percent or like really, really show up even though the beast is inside them. Mm -hmm. Why not? It's, I mean, dude, there's, that's like, I mean, that's such an open-ended question okay, you know okay. I mean? because everybody has it but you could say something like they don't have the discipline to do so they didn't have somebody in their life they didn't have a mentor they didn't have a coach they didn't have somebody who gave a shit about them enough to help them level up because i don't care who you are there's no such thing as a self-made millionaire there's no such Amen. thing as Amen. a self-made anything right. everybody who's successful has somebody who's more successful than them that they looked to that helped them elevate you don't do it on your own and Sometimes people just don't either have too much pride to ask for help and want to always say, Oh, that's a whole nother topic, a whole nother topic. But some people want to say, uh, it's just because like Brendan's successful just because he got lucky and has Instagram. Followers. I have a really nice face. That's, yeah. I think that's why I think my scars is what makes me but successful. Do you know, you know how many people probably say that? Like, fuck Brendan. Like, Oh, of course he's, you know, successful. He got in at the right time. I blink like this though. Sometimes. Yeah, no, I know it's rough. Yeah. It's rough. Fuck. Yeah. All right, guys, I'm not going to do this create you experience anymore. Uh, I've got to go. Uh, no, no. But yeah, you, you, have a, you have a lot of truth to what you're saying. Um, and that beast is inside of everyone. And I'm just going to tell you this right now. Not only can you bring that beast and unleash that beast. Everybody has the potential to. You can. To. Uh, you will if you stay true to your vision and what you want. And you're consistent and you're disciplined. Um, it might not be easy. It's not going to be easy. Nothing's ever easy. Not nothing worth, but, worth having. Right. But the beautiful thing is it's coming and it might not come at the perfect instance. Actually, it most likely won't come at the perfect. It instance. never does. It never does. Perfect Rarely. timing doesn't exist. Right. This is this is research. No, I'm I always do this thing on every episode. I'm like, this is research. This is science. This it is doesn't science. come it doesn't at come a correct ever. time. Never. <laughs> no, but really stay on path. Stay on path with whatever you want to do and take that leap of faith. Mm -hmm. But remember, when you take that leap of faith, do it with baby steps. <laughs> take a take a little, hop, take a little, hop, hop a, a little <laughs> a hop of hop faith. Of faith. <laughs> <laughs> I really wanted to like twist it around in that <laughs> fucking instance. But you you also said something about support. Yeah, you touched on support, and I really want to talk about this because we don't, especially you and I. This is what I'll say: is that, and I can say this because I know Nick, and I know myself. Like we're very similar, mm -hmm. right? We want to get things done on our own. We want to like, we just want to make it happen. We really want to make things happen like yeah. as quickly as possible. We're, we're, doer, we're doers. We're, we're doers. We're getting right? it done. We're not talking. And we're as doers. doers, as promoters, and as kind of controllers in these senses, mm -hmm. we don't see the support sometimes. True. And I think it's mostly because people aren't on the same wavelength as us. Because like you look at you and me, I, I've been in Colorado, what, four hours? And yeah. Brendan and I have already sent off an email to start a business together. <laughs> yeah. Like that's what kind oh, that's man. what happens <laughs> when you go around like minded people who get shit done. And yeah. like the whole saying of like you are who you surround yourself with. Yeah. You know, if you're not in a, a system that's supportive, and this can even be your own fucking family. Mm. I had to cut out my family, ninety nine percent of my family. People are like, I love my family. I love my family to death, but they're fucking losers. What? 
Wait, 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 wait. Like losers as in in life. They have dead end jobs. They're not happy. They complain about everything. And I had to say, dude, I can't, I can't be up on this energy. It's but, it's, but, but I, but this is what I want to say. This is what I want to say, because I, I don't think you mean it in the way that people are going to listen to this and think like, oh, they're fucking losers. Oh, the, this Nick guy's a fucking dick face. Like I, I am never a fucking talk to, dick face, but, but you're not a dick face. <laughs> and this is what I'm going to say. <laughs> this is what I'm going to say is that what he means by losers. It means that he's wanted something for them his entire life. This is what he's trying to say. He's wanted something his entire life to see them grow and do the things that they've always loved to do and always wanted to do. And maybe the relationship's not the best, whatever it is in their own life, whatever it is, but they've settled. Yes. And I think, and to me, settling for, settling for a life that's like average is just as bad as losing. Yes. So to me, that's a loser mentality. Okay. And I can't be around that mentality. So like, I love them with all my heart. I'm always there for them. But as far as me, putting myself in that environment, it's not helping me. It's like putting a plant in a, in a dark room and expecting it to grow. It doesn't. Uh, yeah, that's true. Unless you have a little. Um, unless a little, it's an air plant. Yeah, that's true. Or I have a lot of succulent. Fake, a or succulent. A, or if it's a fake plant. I don't think succulents grow. Yeah. They do. Yeah. Hmm? Do they? Yeah. This but is you, science. You, you, but this is science. This is research. So listen closely. <laughs> this is a, this is, this is on, on WebMD. Listen. <laughs> Let's talk about fucking WebMD. No, but you know, that, that word, I, 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 dude, I literally just like you said, losers, they're fucking losers. I took, I saw your face go. I was like, I was like, no. <laughs> so basically what I just did was we had the mafia in front of us and they all had big, big ass AK 47s, even though they don't use AK 47s. Yeah, That's science right there. Yeah. That's researched. Mm -hmm. It's proven majority vote. I, I, <laughs> And they were, they were pointing their guns at you. And I came in and I was like, listen, guys. This is what he meant. I'm Italian. <laughs> I'm Italian. That's true. Well, they need two to tango. Ah. So I came in there and I said, hey, guys, you need to relax. And then we, we pulled you out. So now everyone knows that being a loser is just like having that losing mentality. And I'm going to shift the jokingness into seriousness. Cool. Like it's just having that losing mentality. Yeah. And you don't want to have that losing mentality all the time. We're going to. I have it sometimes. I'm not going to bullshit. Like, but there's, there's, there's got to be that balance. There's yeah, got to be that scale. Absolutely. And, and when you can get yourself out of that losing feel, that's when you're really going to start seeing things blossom all around you. And this is something that Brendan and I actually joked about, but is super serious. And this is a mindset that needs to, I think, be there for anybody to be successful is you said this and I said it, but we were joking, but it's also true is even when I lose, I I'm win. still winning. All the time. Because yeah. even when I lose, it's a, we take a loss as a, oh, that didn't really work. Yeah. So I'm going to, you know, instead of like, fuck this, I'm going to give up. I'm like, oh, why don't I just try that one? Okay. That one worked. Right. Because a lose doesn't have to be a lose. It just shows you. It actually it just sh shows, hey, that doesn't work. It, it literally, do you know what it does? It gets when you, you lose, to win. When you lose, it gives you insight on the path to win. Uh-huh. When you lose... You find out all the information that you need to bring your vision to life. And so if you tap into that loss, you embrace that loss. And you learn from it. And you learn from biggest, it. Biggest part. Then it becomes, check this out, a fucking experience. Because experience is- To create you. To create you. <laughs> Marketing, baby. Marketing, high five. Yes. To, but to go off of that, this is something that I talk to my competitors a lot about. Um, because, you talk to your competitors. See, this is what I like. Um, this is what I like. Good guy. It's very easy for a competitor to go on stage and think, I'm going to win. And then they lose, and all motivation for the sport goes out the window. Because mm -hmm. it's devastating. You've dieted your ass off. Yeah. You've suffered. And they go on and not get a win. And you go, I lost. I'm not good in this sport. And I go, dude, everybody loses. Everybody. There's not a single person in this sport or anywhere in the world that's not lost. Even Phil Heath, like, check this out. Phil Heath lost. won again and again and again and again and again, and then he lost to Sean Ronan. And you know what? He's still a fucking one Monster. of the most successful bodybuilders in history. It doesn't take away. But what I was going to say is your path, I tell them, your path in competing to get that pro card, to get that Olympia title, you might have to lose because you're, I, I, I'm a huge believer in like most of our path is already predetermined. 
and we just have the ability to uncover it as we go and we can take different paths. But do you think that we have different paths? I like do. we have so many there I do. several I paths. think there's I think yeah. there's a fucking DNA it's like a, tree. a DNA strand of paths and we can figure out which one that we want to go on but we have to search and we have to get uncomfortable if we want to go down that one. So if that path for them to get that pro card and get that win, there might be six losses they have to go through. Right? So you have to lose another six another five times before you get to that goal. Yeah. Guess what? You just knocked one off. So you're one loss closer to that win. But if you win that yes. first, or if you yes. lose that first time and you go, fuck this, I'm done. Well, then yeah, you are done. What a goal. Dude, you're like, it, when you go to McDonald's and you go to get like 20 nuggets and they give you 21, you're like the 21st nugget, man. Wow. That's the <laughs> nicest thing anybody's ever said to me. <laughs> this is why, this is why we're going to partner on a business. Like yeah. this is exactly why. And we're going to call it 21 nuggets. 21 nuggets.com. 21st now. nugget. Five ninety nine when you join today. <laughs> so 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 Nick, man, you talk about losing. Yeah, where have you lost in your life? <sighs> Pretty much nowhere, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a winner because just, when we lose, we, we win. win. <laughs> I mean, dude, I've lost a lot, and I think even losing comes down to more than just business aspects. Like I've lost in friendships, I've lost in relationships, I've lost in. You know, an example. Give us an example in, in, in one area of your life where you've lost and it hurt. Um, I, I, my, my most recent relationship, I, just, I didn't show up. Mm. And it's the same thing. Like we got, got comfortable, stopped showing up, lost. Mm. And that has nothing to do, you know, there's obviously a lot more that peels back for stuff like that. But, you know, same thing for friendships. And again, even when you lose something, it can always be a win. Because I, you know, when I was in high school and college, we had our huge group of buddies. We were best friends. And I got down this path of drinking where I was, I was in a bad spot, man. And I said, I wanted to take a whole year off. That was like my new year's resolution. I was like, I'm not going to drink alcohol for an entire year. Mm. And it took me one month to lose every single friend that I thought I had. And like, that sucks. Yeah. You know, like that felt like a loss to me, but now I look back and I'm like, dude, you guys were only my friends. Cause I was fucking drinking. Mm. You know what I mean? And like, again, I think, I think places where we lose are contextual to that moment. Cause when I stopped getting invited going out, it, it made me feel terrible. Right now I look back at it and I'm, that's one of the biggest losses I'm the most grateful for right. was getting away from that. You know what I mean? Um, I've lost, in a sense, having to, I don't even know if closing my gym was counted as a loss because I had to like do that to pursue online coaching. It's a win. It's a win. Yeah, but it felt like a loss, you know, because it was like, man, I can't really keep this gym open anymore. Like I can't, to me, like I wanted to be able to do both. You just want to win all the time. I want to win all the but, time. But that's okay. But, yeah. And, and that's okay. Um, but those losses are so, so, so important. And you know, you talk about when you're in that alcohol stint, like you were just like going again and again and again, like just fucking tearing you down. Yeah. Right. It was just destroying you. A lot of people that are listening right now or friends of ours. I have friends that struggle ever. That, <laughs> yeah, I have friends. I have friends. Disclaimer. Fact. This is science. This That's is stud <laughs> This is literally on WebMD. <laughs> Go look it up. Now. Brendan Myers has friends. Yes. I have friends. But, you know, I have friends all over that that struggle with something. You know that they're either addicted to literally it's a it's an addiction and i i actually think that we have addictions because of lack of discipline in other areas of our life i 100 percent agree and it's unfortunate because you know cigarettes and then there, there's things that are truly ad addictive that bring out the addictive personality even more in us right as humans we're addicted to relationship and so we're connected, right? Because we're connected. We came out of our, our, our mom, right? All of our, like, I, I think all of us did. I'm pretty sure I, I did. Well, I'm kind of. Web, WebMD that. Web, web, web. <laughs> Let's just find that out. Let's find that out real quick. But we're, we're literally, our lives depend on this, or, or so we thought, like these relationships with everything, mm -hmm. right? Food. Well, you, and you want people to like you. And if people don't, like you're addicted to having people like you. Right. No matter who you are, Somebody doesn't like you. If you and I met and it was all good for you and I was like, I don't fucking like that guy. I would, yeah. It would, it would eat at you a little bit. Like, it doesn't really bother you, but you're like, 
Why the fuck yeah. doesn't Nick like why me? Why doesn't he like why me? Why doesn't he like me? I and want him to like me. I haven't done anything wrong. Oh my gosh, dude. Let's shift right now because this is gold where we're going. Okay. When someone doesn't like you, it's not you. It's them. It's them. It's 100% them. It's their insecurities. And you are every single insecurity they have. Like you personify what they want to be. Then they, they feel right. inadequate too. So they see that in you and they go, fuck him. He sucks. Because they want other people to look at you and say, he sucks because... I don't appreciate the, you talking to me. Like that. <laughs> you're the opposite of them, <laughs> right? You're right. the opposite of them. So they think if people like you... Or they you, have something that you want. But they think if people like you, then on the flip side, that must mean that nobody likes them because you guys are the opposite, right? Yeah. If, but, I, if I love vanilla ice cream, I'm not going to like chocolate ice cream uh, as much. Oh, <laughs> triggered wow, wow that's a trigger yeah we're gonna have to uh we're gonna have to stop that gotta be honest i'm not that. a huge chocolate fan I, no no why i don't know i like i'm just gonna put this childhood out there trauma it, maybe people, oh <laughs> i love childhood trauma childhood traumas play a bigger role than people think in their lives okay are we nick? shifting okay nick are we shifting okay, nick let's fucking dive in baby <laughs> create you times 164.3 wow so yeah that was, that was facts um, so childhood trauma, do you mm -hmm. have any, do you have anything that you haven't talked about? Uh, well, that's the juice that I like to get into. But we, we can get into this juice because I, I, you know, I work with Megan. Yep. And, uh, for those of you who don't know, Megan is a therapist that's Brendan referred me to. I love she, her. She's not a ther She's a, she's a life coach. She's a she, fucking incredible she, coach. Every coach should have a coach. Every if you coach don't have, should a have a coach. coach. Every successful person should have a coach. Get a coach. Yeah. If you don't have a coach, find a coach. But, Nick NK athletics go. <laughs> Link in my bio. 20% uh, for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I've been working with Megan, and Megan's been very, very good at peeling back my bullshit. Yeah. And saying, why do you do this? Why do you do that? Why do you do that? And in my life, when I was growing up, my dad wasn't around mm. at all. You know, he left when I was about two years old. Never grew up with him. And when I was growing up, that never really bothered me. You know, it was just me and my mom in our tiny little trailer park. I felt like I had everything, you know, like my mom sacrificed so much. And like, there was never a point where I was like, man, this sucks. Or like, man, I don't, where's my dad? You know, cause my mom was so, such a good parent yeah. that I never had those feelings, you know, but deep down you do. Absolutely. Right. Like as a kid, you're, even if it's not cognizant, you're not cognizant of it deep down, there is that, why the fuck isn't my dad around? Why am I not good enough? Dude, we had this conversation on the phone. We did. And, you're, and, and I can remember, this is the shift, guys. This is the shift that I'm talking about. This is fucking creating you. I'm not even bullshitting. You said to me that, oh, I don't care that, yeah, it's whatever that my dad wasn't in my life. Actually, I, 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 I remember I, I, I don't really now. like, yeah, like, do I love him? Yeah. It's, it's like, I was like, well, did you ever miss him or anything? Yeah, it's whatever. My mom was incredible. She was amazing. But... Those layers were so fucking thick. Yeah. And remember what I said? I said, Nick, I guarantee you not only do you miss him, but you do love him. Yeah. And I said, I don't know. And to be honest, I still don't know. You know what I mean? That's something that, again, that there's, there's so many things in our life and our past that can affect us right now that we don't even think about. Because like you said, my layers were so thick. Yeah. It was so buried in my subconscious. But subconscious affects our habits it affects how we react to things it, it affects our addictions and unless we identify our toxic traits addition addictions etc and be able to pull back the layers and figure out why we do them we're always going to have them like, exactly you you could be addicted to fighting right because your dad beat the shit wanna, out of you do you want to Oh, oh, okay. This is not a good time to make a not joke a good about time. fighting you. Okay, but I'm going. saying you could be addicted to fighting because in your childhood, your dad beat the shit out of you and you don't even remember it. Yeah. And you know fighting's bad. But until you dive in and figure out the reason I want to fight is because I always felt inadequate when my dad beat the shit out of me. So it makes me feel empowered to beat the shit out of somebody else. Right? Mm. That's a crazy egg to crack for yeah. somebody to be like, holy shit, that's why I fight because that's what makes me feel like a man. I just fucked. I just blew some people's Yeah, dude, that was a bomb. That was like a nuclear bomb. I just, that, that was on the fly too. Like I feel it. I feel all the energy smacking me in my face. I'm like, oh shit, nuclear bomb. That was, that was off the dome the, too. The, the truth is, man, it's, it's not even only your parents. It's, it's, it's everything. It's everything and everyone like. Everything. I, and I, I, I talk, I kind of talk about this a little bit more about like my brother and, and kind of how I felt 
look, I've done some horrible things myself mm -hmm. that I'm not proud of by any means, but they were learning lessons, you know? I, like, there was one time that I put my hands on my sister. One time. But, like, I, put, I like, threw her away from me. She deserved it, though. N no, no. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Loser, and now he's saying deserve it. <laughs> no, but, like, you know, I've done a couple things. Mm -hmm. And, like, me throwing my sister is, like, not now. Not, it, by the way, everybody, this did not just happen now. That's literally WebMD It was, certified. like, two weeks ago. Give me a break. No, no, but, like, that was something that was pain within myself. Yeah, absolutely. It was pain within myself. That you didn't know how to control. Exactly. I didn't know how to control. And I used to get, like, be, like, proud of saying, I have anger problems. Because it felt like I was a, bad a badass. Yeah, 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 like a badass. I was empowered. Like, everyone was like, oh, my gosh, he has anger problems. He's powerful. He can yeah. do whatever. Like, I literally. It was, a, it was a dominance thing. It was a dominance thing. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't even fucking know what being submissive meant. Like, being submissive isn't a bad thing all the time. It's actually you're allowing the other person or something else in your life to, to give you information yeah. so and that you can actually learn about it. That's actually being like literally, literally living a neutral life, like feminine energy and masculine and, energy. But you know what? I think the perfect combination of those is the definition of an alpha. Yeah. Because a lot of people think alpha is douchebag. I've got anger problems. Talk shit and I'll fuck you up, right? When a real alpha is like, if someone's like, hey, you want to fight? You're like, what did you want? Why would you want to fight me for? What and then is, talking about it. What is the reason that you want to fight me? I'm not going to fight you, right? I don't, yeah. I don't need to fight you to prove myself as a man. Well, let's talk about it. You know, more oftentimes than not, the dude who's trying to start shit <laughs> is an alpha. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, uh, uh, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah, and you're like, yeah. you're like, it's cool, man. We don't have to fight. You know, like, I don't need to fight you to prove my manhood. I know I have, you know, I know I have it. Like, that's alpha. Be Women, able. watch out. NK Athletics and, and Nick over here is like going to stare you in the eyes and be like, and I know I got it. <laughs> I I'm like Ariana Grande, bro. Ariana Grande. Justin Biebs. Oh. What do you think about Justin Bieber? Currently? Yeah, yeah. What do you think about him, man? Um, I don't, you know, I don't really follow him a whole lot. I know. Uh, Miley Cyrus. What do you think about Miley Cyrus? I think that. She's a great example of you can fall off your path and you can get back on. <laughs> like a moon like a moon? You can get on top of a moon. <laughs> I think I think Miley Cyrus. Or was it was a like, sledgehammer. What, what, that she was like <laughs> It was a wrecking ball. It was a wrecking <laughs> uh, But I think Miley <laughs> Cyrus is a great, a great example of a wrecking ball destroying your life and you still being able to build it back again. Cause she's back to normal. I don't know what happened to her when she was like blonde short hair and like twerking on stage but I, and like but i i actually think twerking is a good thing man oh me too <laughs> avid twerker avid mom tabletop dad twerker. turn it off right now <laughs> seriously shit's about to get real you want to dive yeah, into that <laughs> you want to oh nick man yeah like we could literally talk all day i know um, like <laughs> we started a here's how you'd be a good coach and then we went to, your dad probably beat the shit out of you <laughs> oh, when God. you were younger. And oh, then God. we went to, my family's a loser. <laughs> oh, <my laughs> but, but then, but then we, I saved you from And now we're, twerking with, and now we're Cyrus. twerking with Miley Cyrus. So this is good news. This is how you create you. I better, a, there better be five stars to, all on this podcast. A, a to Z. Yeah. And, and by the way, guys, like as we're going, like don't, don't forget to review the podcast on iTunes. You also get like seven free gifts from myself. So definitely jump on that. You know, I, I <laughs> just like... Dude, I kind of felt like, uh, you know, Logan Paul. Yeah. The, so, vi the vine. The, the, uh, the, uh, so he does YouTube. I, I think it's, he's like a genius when it comes to like content and stuff, but, uh, he throws his like, isn't this the dude who's like on blast for like coming on his cat right now? Did he do that? That's, that's all over Twitter, bro. He literally put out a tweet that was like this, 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 like, no, I did not have sex with my cat. No, I did not come on my cat. And I was like, if you even have to be in a position where you have to put out a tweet like that, I think you should stop what you're doing. Okay, so content creation. Now we're into content creation. <laughs> this is an incredible, empowering moment. So let's dive in. You, when you, I'm not even bullshitting. I'm like shifting the conversation right yeah, now. Yeah, let's get out of this. When you literally create. Yeah. When you are posting something on your story, when you're posting something, just actually just posting whatever, what type of value is that? Like, what does it mean to you? to post something to, to your followers or anyone listening. Like what, what is that on the, on a, on a scale of, of like zero to a hundred being 
I fucking love every single thing that I say to my to my followers and I'm passionate about it. I take time with it. I like really open, I'm vulnerable, all the way down to zero being I don't really do that. Like where does that fall for value for you with I, your posting? Well, see, I think I have to go kind of in the middle just because I do both. Yeah. Um, because I give a I give a huge shit about my followers. Okay. Like I respond to almost every DM. Like I like people are like, holy shit, I can't believe you responded. Cause I always respond with videos. Like if somebody asks me a question, I, I record myself on Instagram right. and I talk to them and everyone's like, holy shit, I can't believe how personable you are. And I'm like, you follow me, you support me. I appreciate the fuck out of you. You know what I mean? So when I go to post like an informative content, I make sure it's something that's going to apply to a bunch of people who have the same issue. Like my one on caffeine that I was telling you about earlier, people over abuse caffeine and they don't understand how or much abuse, it, abuse caffeine, yeah. abuse and they don't understand how much it negatively affects them. So I was like, hey guys, here's the science behind it. Maybe we should all chill on caffeine a little bit. And you know what happened? I started getting tagged in like 50 stories a day of people like switching to decaf, monitoring my yeah. intake. And people being like, you know, three, four days later, people like, holy shit, I've never felt so good in my entire life. You know what I mean? And like having just that one post that I was like, hey, this can help people. And seeing people trust me enough to say, hey, I'm gonna implement this because like I trust Nick. And then being like, holy oh, shit, I amen. felt the best I've ever felt is like, that puts me at a hundred. But then I'll also post on my story like, what's up dudes, I'm out taking fucking shots of vodka. You know what I mean? But like- <laughs> Low calorie. I'm a, I'm a real Facts. person, dude. Facts. I don't put on this facade of like, oh, I'm Nick the trainer always. I'm like, nah, here's a fucking informative post. I give a shit about my clients, but I also like the party. Ooh, I like to party too, Nick. Are we shifting again? Yeah, are we shifting? No, no, no. But no, but I really like that because you're, you're talking about a, a, a spectrum of value mm -hmm. that I actually believe it's all value because even when you don't need to post something, even when you don't need to provide value, you're still bringing something to the table. Absolutely. And you're still giving. You're still providing something so that people know the real you. I'm showing up. Yeah, you're showing up. That's, that's what you're doing and you're bringing the vulnerability and you're bringing the authenticity behind, hey guys, not only can I tell you about caffeine and go there, even though it's a little nerve wracking, like, oh shit, like how are people gonna respond? Mm -hmm. And you wanna really make sure you know what you're talking about, but you're also saying, I'm a regular fucking dude that goes and takes shots sometimes with friends and goes dances on, on countertops. Maybe not countertops. Uh, it's bar tops. Bar tops. Bar tops. Bar tops. Really? Mm hmm. Hmm. I do countertops as well. I'm 210 pounds, bro. I, I got are you here. saying I'm not uh, nearly as big as you? Yes. That's very interesting. <laughs> That's not facts. That's not WebMD. Just That's not WebMD. Just wanted to put that out there. Um, <laughs> fuck. I was going to say something too, and then we went on to twerking. Um, <laughs> we damn to it. Twerk. You caught me. You caught me. YouTube, off, baby. Bro. But like, I think uh, this is where I was going with it. Is I think when it goes back to like how many fucking followers people have and how they treat their following and like their customers, their clients, et cetera, is like, you're not above anybody. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I see so many influencers that like people DM them like, oh my God, I love you so much. Like that. And they just like, don't even fucking respond. Like, do you know how many, I don't know if you follow Gary V. Of course. Gary V has like hundreds of thousands of followers. And he's like, I respond to every single fucking comment. And then you have girls with 100,000 followers that are like, mm, no. 32 comments. Fuck you, number 30. Yeah, like, no, nah, I don't have time. I don't have time. Like, dude, we went, we went on PB the other weekend and I had two followers. They're Pacific like, Beach, by the way. Yeah, Pacific Beach in San Diego. And I had two followers DM me. They're like, oh my God, like, we're in Pacific Beach right now. We're visiting San Diego. Can we meet up? I was like, fuck yes. I'm at Backyard right now. I will wait for you guys to get here. Like, let me know when you get to the front line because like, I know the security guards. I'll let you guys in. Dude, dude. And I fucking got them in and we had drinks and we enjoyed ourselves and it was sick. Like it, they're just people. Dude, the truth is, is that you are not better no. than anyone. You think because somebody looked at your profile and hit follow that all of a sudden you're just like on this fucking pedestal above them? It's an app. You know what happened when Instagram crashed for eight hours? <laughs> people lost their Fucking mind. Yeah, people had to read, dude. You know what I did? Yeah, like nothing. I was fine. I didn't even notice. I was like, oh, my Instagram's being weird. That's weird. And I got back to my normal fucking work day. Yeah. And then by the time I looked back at my phone again, it was working again. And Twitter was like, is everybody's Instagram down? That's interesting, man, because I got arrested. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. His Instagram was down. <laughs> yeah, I threw a sledgehammer through the. <laughs> <laughs> you just came in like a wrecking ball. Huh? <laughs> I was literally Miley Cyrus 2.9. Wow. Yeah, not even 2.0. But dude, like for real, like it's fucking insane how people can take an app like Instagram 
and feel like they're God's gift to this earth because of it. It makes no sense. And you know what this, and this is actually another topic. It's like, don't just settle for one social media platform. Like, oh, yeah. like literally build create. something, cr create you outside of just one platform. And I'm talking about relationships and network. I, mm -hmm. I'm in Denver, Colorado. You are too, clearly. Yes, this is where we <laughs> this are. This is where we are, guys. Facts. Um, and I have met so many people. I literally walk into a door and I'm like, hey, how are you? Hey, how are you? Hey, I just moved here from LA. What's your name? I like speak Well, to you know what? Women. This is funny because I actually put this on my YouTube channel when we were filming that. We were on the bridge and there are these two guys asking us for places to shoot photos. And they're like, oh, we're doing product shots right now. And Brendan perked up, walked right over. These guys shook their hand, was like, I'm Brendan. What's your product? It was a belt. A yeah, belt yeah, without, yeah, yeah. Without belt, holes. Yeah, and Brendan was just like, this is great. What do you guys do? Where are you from? Here's this. How can I help you guys get better? And I said, that's a fucking business. Man. Like, that's an entrepreneur. That's somebody who doesn't put themselves above people, but genuinely wants to see everybody create themselves yeah. at their highest level. That's a successful fucking person. And you know what? And, and you know what's cool about this is that when I was speaking, and thank you, by the way, a lot for that, mm -hmm. because that's- That's the only comment you're gonna get from me this entire dude, weekend. Thank you. So I acknowledge you for telling me that. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord. But the reason why I did that, two young guys, is because you never know who they are. You yeah. never know who they're connected to. You never know what they're trying to create and and what smile you can bring to their day. You don't know if they're suicidal. Yeah. You don't know if they hate someone. You don't know if they're about to go fucking shoot someone. Yeah. You don't know shit. You don't know if their mom has cancer. You don't know anything. So what did I do? I said, hey, what what do you guys do? And then I was able to create their vision a little bit in their minds and, and, and these dudes glowed it and they glowed they glowed by, and you know what i did i said hey what do you do they told me one of the kids said i'm a program i'm like no shit you know what's funny i've been trying to create an app and someone's been bullshitting me for the longest time i've also wasted 27 fucking thousand dollars on an app by the way yes i've done that before and i've blown twenty seven thousand dollars on much worse okay we're not gonna go there we're that's 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 interesting topic vegas but my point is <laughs> But my, my point is that I now have, have a connect with a programmer that could potentially build an entire app. And that was purely just from Brendan being the type of guy that he is, which is a positive person. Yeah. Brendan, like Brendan's energy, just it's disgusting. <laughs> I hope that's a good thing. It, it's like disgusting in the good way that like it's so it's, it's almost overbearing if you're not used to it because he's such a positive person and he wants to talk to people and he wants to. He wants everybody he comes into contact with to feel positive when they leave him. And I admire the fuck out of it because I'm the same way. And like we've said, you and I are a lot alike. Yeah. Everybody who I've seen Brendan come in contact to today has left in a positive way. And you don't see that anymore. You see people walk on the street, neck fucking broken, looking down at their phone. Attitude. Why are you talking to me? And Brendan's like, what's your name? Mm. What do you do? Facts. Fuck yeah, that's no, great. Dude, to be honest, like it's hard for me to even like accept that. Like one of the biggest things for in my life has been, and I don't know how the fuck the tide's turning. This is my podcast. So please. I'll shut up. You're the guest. <laughs> no, Flip it. Go no, ahead. No, but like I've never been able to acknowledge myself. I'm the same way. Or, or not never. I used to not be able to. And when someone would acknowledge me, I'd be like, whoa. Uh, um, yeah, your hair's nice, dude. <laughs> you know like and 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 it would just be like so weird it's like yo why aren't you just accepting it and and yeah. actually it hurt and harmed my relationships because i wasn't acknowledging other people for acknowledging me and it's because I've i was that insecure same, man yep. i was fucking insecure about everything everything about that i was everything. like there's no there's no no wait it's like no wait wait a second i am i really that nice of a guy oh wait do i care that much oh do I really want to be on a pedestal? No, like, you know, even though I, I kind of was. I think everybody wants to be. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're stupid if you say you don't want people to look at you in that type of light. You're a liar. Yeah. Nobody wants to be like, nah, I, just, I wish people just thought like I was base level. Nobody yeah. wants that. Um, but like, dude, I'm the same way when people compliment me. Like when I grew up in high school, like I was the ugly, skinny kid that like didn't. Nicholas, you're very handsome. Bro. Thank you. No problem, brother. Yeah, brother. <laughs> but like, dude, like, and this, this is something that harmed my relationships a lot. And like, I can talk about it now, but like, I never got attention from girls. And like, 
I'm pretty confident with myself as a man now in terms of like my looks, my physique, and like my confidence going yeah. forward. But even to this day, if we go out at a bar and a, and a good looking woman approaches me and talks to me, I'm like, what? <laughs> like it still throws me off me because too, man. I'm still mentally like that dude from high school. Yeah. Dude, you, you know what's very interesting to this? Is that uh, number one, bro? You you know you're a good looking dude, and you have, you carry incredible energy, and you you really yeah like oh shit <laughs> like squirming uh, fuck stop stop <laughs> deflect deflect you want to spar <laughs> <laughs> you want to fight fight me, <laughs> um, but yeah you are man like coming from one dude to another mm -hmm. out of respect and um, it's it's actually empowering to to me like hearing this mm -hmm. from you because I literally have shifted from that. Yeah, I've been able to shift from that. Like I'm going to drop off some some food to this, this beautiful woman. She's beautiful. Like I'm just gonna be real. Like she's absolutely beautiful. I'm dropping food off to her because like I respect our friendship and everything. But like I I don't feel uncomfortable if she were to tell me, "Oh, I like you," anymore. Yeah. Or like, "Hey, I do want to pursue this." Or I don't. I like I am. I do get uncomfortable about how much am I gonna text her? Like, oh. I don't, I don't yeah. want to take that extra step with her. Like, what if I do drop off food to her? And then she, she looks at me weird. Like, Oh, like you, you think that we're more than friends. Whoa, I just want to Chipotle yeah, free. Yeah, I want to <laughs> Chipotle free. But like the truth is that I've shifted from that mentality and I've been able to, in those instances, be so comfortable with the uncomfortable that, Hey, this is what it is. Like I, if everyone else is telling me that I am a good looking guy, I must be a good looking guy. I must, I, there must be something. Yeah. It probably is the tip of my nose <laughs> and I need to start showing the tip. Of my... <laughs> you know what I'm saying though? No, I you do. I know exactly what you're saying, dude. But what you said is like, you get used to, and this is what I told you. When I work with people, I see what makes them uncomfortable yeah. and I make them do more of it. So if people complimenting you makes you uncomfortable, I'm going to put you in a position where more people are going to compliment you because eventually it becomes comfortable. You right. get used to it. Like think of the first time as babies we ever started trying to walk. It was fucking hard. It was uncomfortable. We would right. fall. We didn't want to try because it fucking sucked. When you fell, it hurt. Then eventually you got used to it. Yeah. It's the same thing with. I never fell as a baby, by the way. Wow. That's impressive. Yeah. It was the elevation. Probably. <laughs> 5,480 feet. <laughs> yeah, a mile high. But embracing what makes you uncomfortable and really being able to say like, hey, I don't do well when people compliment me. And it's affecting my mindset. It's affecting my relationships with people. I need to get better at accepting compliments. Yeah. The only way to do that is to start accepting compliments. And seeing it. You know what and I seeing mean? Seeing that you're, that like, seeing that when it happens and you and it's actually in a compliment but sometimes we block it out and we don't even know it's a compliment yeah well like, so, and some people have that defense mechanism like you're making fun of me yeah like they walk up and like wow you are super handsome and you like look around like are your friends fucking laughing right now like oh like go tell that ugly fucking dude that he's i bet you won't like i bet you won't go hit on him right <laughs> you're like you're like okay you're a solid 10 and i'm like a and a, uh, I'm like a good six. I'm a six on a good day yeah, with like, my hair done. <laughs> like, what is, like, what's going on? You're yeah, making yeah, fun yeah, of yeah, me. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? But, and, but the truth is, is that we're, we're always beautiful in someone's eyes. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we need, to we need to take in every single day. We are always beautiful in our, our friend's eyes or our mom or our dad. Or, you know what? You know where the beautifulness... That's not even a fucking word, is it? Just, grow, just roll okay, with it. Okay, let's roll with it. You know where, the, where all that beauty comes it comes from how you show up with other people. Absolutely. And the relationship and the energy you give off. Well, attraction is built based off energy. Yeah. Right? Sure, there's physical. When you first start, like to approach somebody, you have right. to be physically attracted to them. Right. But what gets people to stay, what gets people to form that relationship with you, get, I don't want to say addicted to you, but like crave your energy and crave you is your energy that you put out. Yep. You could be the best looking person in the world. If your energy sucks, nobody's going to stick around. Right. You know, so it comes down to how you show up for other people. And that took me such, such a long time to grasp fully with every single person in my life, whether it be girlfriend, friend, business partner, mom, clients, right? right? Everybody needs and deserves a certain amount of your energy 
and for you to show up to them. Otherwise, they drop off. They stop working with you. They start coming around. They break up with you, right? Because energy has to be balanced. Right. It's true. True. But like it, everything in life is balance. Absolutely. Yin and yang. It, it's <laughs> black and white. Mm-hmm. Dude, that's some solid shit. I, I, I literally don't even have much else to say about like the balance that, thing or yeah. like really. It just is what it is. Dude. Just, just like everything is encompassing about is like creating you. It's, it's, it's literally just create you so you can create everything else in your life so it can blossom. So it could truly be what, what you've always wanted. Like you said, dude, you can't create anything until you create you. Yeah. You can't have a relationship with somebody. You can't have a successful business unless you create the energy inside of yourself to do so and maintain them. Discipline. Discipline. Consistency. Passion. All of this. Words. All, all of this. All of these words. Everything that you do in your life is, is so dependent on how you show up for yourself every day. And so we're going to wrap up now and, and really summarize this thing, this thing, <laughs> this, fucking thing. this, this <laughs> shit storm of a podcast that but, created a lot of value. This is, this is a lot of different value. And this is exactly how I want to, sh- I personally want to show up with every single person that comes on here is because there's so much to talk about. Mm-hmm. So why not tap in to, and dabble with everything? Well, what's anything. crazy is when you just, get to people that are passionate and you start talking about things, how things can bleed over to other things. Right. And that's just like what we talked about, how like you don't think that something negative in your past can bleed over to everything else. Right. Yeah. Look at how interwebbed and far out our podcast went from just rolling things into another. True. Right. That's how everything's going to be. Right. Pretty crazy. Dude, (laughs) this was literally Everything I could ask for and more. So Nick and K Athletics impact <laughs> to everybody that knows this man. Thank you. And we'll see you next time. <laughs> no, but but seriously, thank you for coming on. Thank you for sharing a bit of your story and getting vulnerable with everyone. Thank you for going there and standing for other people that are listening to this and watching this. Absolutely. Because man. it's not only about you. You know that. It's about everyone around us mm-hmm. and, and the impact that we can create. Oh, I love that. And, and dude, the impact that we can create, you, yo, this shit's fucking dope. Yo, uh, yo, yeah, we're like shaking hands. So, <laughs> so again, thank you so much, Nick, for joining us on the Create You Experience. If you're listening on audio, remember you can watch this on YouTube, four different camera angles. My <laughs> man over there, Spec, I call him Spec. His name's Mike. He's a beast behind the camera. Thank you so much, bro. You're always showing up and I appreciate you. I appreciate everyone that listens to this and watches this here the create you experience again. Remember, if you want to receive seven incredible items, absolutely free, my ABAP program, I have my fat loss meal plans, uh, like a, a bunch of things that I, uh, goodies that I just give to you. I'll attach a headshot. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know what the fuck that meant. Like a, a headshot, like a picture of my face. Interesting. As of one of their gifts. Yeah, that's very interesting, Nick. You just got so many five-star reviews. It was I know. Wow. Thank you so much, Nick. You're welcome. What would I do without NK Athletics or Impact? Not much. I wouldn't be able to create me. (laughs) (laughs) But but in all serious, go ahead into the show notes and also into the description on YouTube. And also, you can find it on on social media. It's just like my way to give back. Just, hey, here's something for you. I also teach you how to build your business and stuff absolutely free. I'm I'm literally just asking for a review on iTunes. I think that's that's a cool way to give back. It's a pretty good trade. Yes, a pretty good trade. Um, if you want to check out Nick, where, where can they find you? Uh, you guys can find me on Instagram, YouTube. That's pretty much my two that I utilize. Um, both of them are just my name, Nick Comedina. I'm the same on anything. Literally any social media you want to find me on Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat. Yeah. Everything is Nick Comedina. Yeah, I'm just lucky make to sure have that a you, unique name. Yeah, d- make sure you don't type in Comedia or Omadia or something like, because you might get a little confused on his Instagram. So it's Nick Comodina. Yeah. Okay. Check him out on Instagram. Check him out on YouTube. If you do want coaching or anything like that, like seriously, he's the man. He's the fucking man. I appreciate it. And if you do go to him, don't let me know. I'm just kidding. Tell him, tell me. Cause so he could be like, Hey, did so-and-so sign up? Yeah. They, they came <laughs> yeah. from my podcast, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much for tuning in for this episode of the create you experience. Nick, thank you for joining us. Everyone thank out there, go create you. Go be who you've always wanted to. Do not hold back. Do not doubt your dreams and your goals because it's true. It's true. Not only can you make them happen, but you can make them happen quicker than you could ever imagine if you keep on chugging. 
So thank you again for joining us and we'll see you next time on the Create You Experience. My right, I fell down, got up, I'm unbreakable. Anything in my way, I'ma break through. Lights, camera, action, take two. Can't worry about what they do, you gotta create you.